Hi guys, Christian here from Architects here. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to my channel. So I just got this question from a new Archicad user and he wanted to know how to use the door and window shadow option in Archicad. So let me just do this video and show you guys in case someone else would like to know. Alright, so I'm going to go to the floor plan and this is the project we'll be working on. It's a very simple two-bedroom bungalow design. Alright, first let me open the door shadow. And show you what it looks like just off the bat what Akika gives us so I'll go to the projects map and I'm just going to go down to shadow under shadow you open elements and this is where you're going to see the shadow you double click to open the shadow all right so <laughs> just looking at this I know this is where the confusion comes in because there's a lot going on if I just try to see everything, we have just so much information going on here, which can be very confusing, but we're going to clean this out. So just only the information you need will be available here. All right, so let's go back to the ground floor. The first thing I like to do when starting door schedule or window schedule is to identify which door goes into which element category, you know, so for example, in this plan, I have two entrance doors, one from the veranda and one into the kitchen, right? So these two doors will be grouped into one category. Maybe I'll call it D1. And I have interior doors of 900 mm with three of them, one to the kitchen and the two bedrooms. These three will be categorized into, or will be grouped into a different ID, D2. And then I have toilet doors, of 750 mm these three doors will probably be, be grouped into d3 all right so i'm going to go one by one and group them so i'll select these two entrance doors i'll control t to go to the door settings and the first thing i'll do is to go to classification and properties and under id i'll just change this long id and just call it d1 and I'll go to dimension marker. And under no marker, select marker type. I'll look for say D marker 25. Let me click OK. Let's see what we have. Okay, so this is what D marker 25 looks like, but this is not what I want to get. So I can still go back to the door settings and adjust this. So let me go back to the door settings, Ctrl T again. The first thing I want to do, I don't want to see any extension line, so I'll just uncheck this box. Marker position, I want the marker to just be in the middle of the door, so I'll make it zero. Click on this arrow to go to the next slide, and under orientation, I'll make this horizontal. I want to see the ID, so I'm going to show ID. Click the arrow next. I don't want to see any dimension, so I'll uncheck this box. And now, next I'll just click on this to select the options and on that 2D representation, I want the background pane to be transparent. So I'll just click and choose this option for transparency. Next I'll go to dimension marker and change this marker to say 5 so that it will be smaller. Alright, and I can check uniform marker and pen and make this say red and click ok alright now this is much better if it's too big I can still go back to the door settings and make this maybe 4 and under marker textile I can just make this 1.5 and click ok all right, so we have D1. Next, I'm going to select this interior doors of 900 mm and do the same thing to there. Go back to door settings, classification and properties. Make this D2 under dimension marker. Change the marker to D marker 25. Under marker symbol and text, I'll uncheck extension line like I did before. Marker position, make it zero. Go to the next slide. Orientation, horizontal like before. 
uncheck dimensions and go to 2D representation and make it transparent. Go back to dimension marker. I'll make this marker size 4. Check uniform marker pen, make it red. This all depends on how you want it to look, to look like, but I'm just showing you examples of how you can adjust the settings, right? So I'll also make this 1.5 as the text size and click OK. All right, so we have D2. I'll do the same thing for the toilet doors, D3. It's just the same process. All right, so we have the door, the door tags in all the doors. So we have D1, D2 for the interior doors of 900mm, and D3 for the toilet doors. So I'm going to go back to door shadow. Let's see what we have. Okay, not much has changed, right? That's because we still have too much information just going on here. So I'm going to take out all the information I don't need and just leave the ones I want for this shadow so to do that let me go to scheme settings and this is where we have all the fields that we need so i'm going to delete the ones i'm going to leave the element id i'm going to de delete dynamic id so i'll just remove library part name i'll remove the quantity i want the quantity to be there from zone i'll remove to zone i'll remove normal nominal width and height size remove orientation i'll also remove just remove this and 3D back view, I'll leave it, then I'll remove the remaining. When that is done, I'll click OK. And if I click fit width, then we can see. Now I have D1, D2, and D3, but I still have this, which looks like a problem, this door opening. I don't want this to show in my schedule. So what I'm going to do is to select this from the door schedule, and I can either select in 3D, or select on floor plan. So let me select in 3D. All right, so they are all selected in 3D. I can go to the door settings. And what I want to do in this case is just to open classification and properties. And if you can see, that door opening has been classified under a door. So if I go to this classification, you can see that it has been classified under a door. So what I'll do is to uncheck this box so that it will remain unclassified. If I do that and click OK and go back to my door schedule, now you can see that it has disappeared, right? So I just have D1, D2, and D3, which is exactly what I want. But this is not all I need. I still want one more rule under here for the description of the doors, right? So I want to be able to tell whoever is looking at this what type of door this is. This is D1 entrance door, so it's probably going to be some kind of, you know, security door, right? So I want to be able to describe it here, but there's no field. So what I'm going to do is to add a field for it. I'm going to go back to scheme settings and click add field and go to general and just scroll down and look for custom text one. You can choose any of these, but let's start with custom text one. I'm going to double click and we have custom text one here. I'll click OK. Now I can double click this and just delete it and rename it description. Click away and you have this. Now I can also change this to look like the remaining. If I click on this, you can see it's bold and it has been aligned to the left. So I also click on this, make it bold and align it to the left. All right. Now you can just write whatever you want in this place, whatever it is. You can just Fill it up there. Also, you can adjust the spacing here. You can adjust the spacing here. You can, you can also adjust the spacing here. These are just the, a few adjustments you can make to, to the shadow. Alright? Now, another thing you can adjust is the arrangement of this, of this column. So, for example, I want my quantity to be the last thing in this arrangement, right? So, I want the element ID 
this 3D view, I'm just going to change the name to the type. Okay. Then I want description before the element ID. So what I'll do is to go back to scheme settings. And if you see these two arrows in each of the each of the fields, I can pick this arrow, click and hold, and just drag quantity to be under. So that if I click OK, now I have quantity under description. One more thing you can do is in case I want to, and this is why working with this with scheduling instead of drafting your scheduling manually, this is why it's so key. So that if I want to change this door, say I want to change this door design, I can just click on this door and go to probably select on floor plan or 3D. But since this is just a single story, I can just select on floor plan and the two doors have been selected. I'll do control T to go to the door settings and see, for example, let me just look for hinge door settings and see, I want to change the door lift type to, let me just look for something very simple, say this, I can do, just select this, click OK, so that if I go back to door settings, it has been changed. Say I want to change this toilet door, so I can go select in 3D, go to door settings, and under hinge door settings, I can go to door lift type and maybe I want to just make this a plain style one. Click OK. Go to door settings and it has changed. Now, you can also change in this place, you can also change the text style. Let me just say I want to make this Flux Architect. I like using Flux Architect. It has changed, so you can make, remove the bold. I remove the bold. Remove the bold. All right. Now for the final thing I want to show you, these doors now there are no dimensions on them. So to put dimensions, I can easily click on one of these doors and just click Add Automatic Dimensioning. Now you can see we have dimensioning on the doors. I can go to Dimensioning Settings and say I want to change the positioning. Can make this above and left and click OK. Now the dimensions have changed to above and left. Or you can also automatically annotate them. Do it manually to annotate them. But I don't want to do that, so I'll just exit that. So simply that's how you are going to deal with door schedules. The same thing I did with door schedule is exactly what you're going to do with window schedule. The process is pretty much the same. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. See you in the next one.